The goal of this page on linear regression is to give you a feeling about how linear regression actually works. You'll have come across it in courses on statistics before that you'll heard that, well, we're fitting a straight line in various ways. But I really want to give you an idea of kind of the mathematics behind it. What is it actually doing? How it's minimizing the sum of squares? And then also how we use it in practice in order to find relationships in football data. So as usual, uh, this is the web page. And what you need to do is you need to get it into a Jupyter Notebook or into Spider if you're working on Spider. Again, I'll say that um, I recommend you use Spider for developing things, but I tend to use the Jupyter Notebooks here just because it's easier with the presentation and it's more consistent. Well, it is consistent with the web pages here. So here's the Jupyter Notebook. Start it up here, do the usual imports. Now, I collected some data here, and if this link works, I should be able to see where the data is. I used FBREF, which is a really lovely web page where you can actually find a lot of data on <laughs> loads of different things um, and incredible range of uh, stats about different players. But I was interested in this particular case in the relationship between the age of a player and how many minutes they play. So one reason we might be interested in this in particular, I'll give you a couple of reasons. We might be interested in when a player comes to their peak age. What is the peak age for a player when they're, they're played most? Because they're probably one of the best players in the team. And also we might think about the curve up there when we think about how, um, how a player develops. If we sign a 17-year-old, how many minutes do we expect that player to be playing? Now, of course, players vary in, in various different ways. But what we're trying to do with the linear regression is measure the overall trend in this. So we have like a load of stats. We have all the players in La Liga. Can we find a relationship between um, the, the age of the player and the minutes played by the player? Now, we call the, um, the input, we could call it the input variables. I like the machine learning terminology here. We have an input variable and we have an output variable. In our case, the input variable is the age of the player and the output variable, the thing we're trying to predict is the minutes played. There is a sort of risk in say, putting it this way because it kind of feels like there's a causation there that, that it's the, the age causes how long they play, which isn't quite right. But, but I, th I think it's, it's reasonably okay to say input age, output minutes played. And so, um, I downloaded the CSV file. It was pretty easy, actually, just to load it straight in. This is a, a line which loads it into, um, into a data frame, which we've, which we've already used. And now I'm just going to create a new data frame where, because there was loads of stuff in this data frame, I'm going to create a new data frame which has the things that I'm most interested in. And so here's minutes played, here's age. And also, because later I want to use a polynomial model, um, a quadratic model, and so I'm going to look at age squared. If you can actually do if, for example, and I think this is something you can try later, is that you can try powers of three, for example. So we could also, you could make, make aged, age cubed in order to make a more detailed model. But we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, so let's, let's run this. Okay, I had to restart a little bit there because I forgot to put the um, uh, link, the correct link to the playerstats.csv. When you do it, you have to download the playerstats.csv and put it in your working directory or point towards it. So I've pointed towards it here. I've also added a line here, uh, minutesmodel.head, so we can get an idea of, idea of this. So um, I have taken, and I didn't say this at the start, I'm only going to take the first 20 observations because I want to illustrate how the method works. Of course, when you're doing the fitting properly, you need to take all of the observations or all the observations that you want to want to use. But I'm just taking 20 observations. And then I've created this uh, minutes model and I'm looking at the top of it here. So here is for player zero. I've, I've removed the names of them in this case. Uh, this is the number of minutes uh, that he played. This is his age. This is his age squared, and this is his age cubed. We're going to use the age and the age squared in this fitting. But as I said, you can actually put in some more um, values. Even though it's called linear regression, you can have a nonlinear function of the data. And this is a nonlinear function of the data, that we have an age, we have age squared. So squared is nonlinear. When it's just age, it's linear. 
and cubed is obviously nonlinear as well. So um, it, it's linear in the fitting of the variables, but um, you can actually transform the variables to be nonlinear functions of the original variables. Okay, so let's um, let's just plot this data to get started with. And it looks something like this. So pretty messy. Again, just taken 20 data points to get us started. And what we want to do is we want to fit a straight line model to this data. There is a lot of variation. There's, here's a 50, a 16, 17 year old here. It's played, I don't know, 100 minutes or something. There's some 30 year olds up here who played 2,500 minutes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to fit the um, the straight line. This is the equation for the straight line. I'm going to show it back on here where it's uh, should be nicely latex. So y is a function of um, one parameter b naught plus b one x. So b naught is the intercept, and b one is the slope of this relationship, and x is the age in this case. So let's do the the fitting. Now, um, there's a lot of stuff that comes out when we do this, and and I've chosen I've chosen to use a very particular library in Python um, called Statistical Models, and that's because it does these traditional statistical fitting things. You see the R squared here, which we'll come to in a future um, thing. This measures the sort of goodness of the fit, how much of the data is explained um, by this particular model. We also have p-values here. They're not very significant. So normally we talk about a significance level of 0 0.05. P-value, <laughs> there's a kind of more of an art than a science around p-values, but they're not going to be very significant because the um there's so little data but actually for age we do have a value between uh, below 0 0.05 and this indicates that age does predict playing time to some degree that it's reasonable to say that younger players have less playing time than older players which we'd expect and, and makes a lot of sense so when we've done the fit and uh, I, i'll come back a little bit later when we look at the look at the um expected goals model to dealing with these types of tables and how we work with them but what i want to um get to for now is what are the parameter estimates and so this says that minutes played is roughly 102 minutes so it's yeah. minutes played is 102 times the age of a player minus 1000 so let's just try and do an example of this so say your age is 20 then you multiply 20 by 100 roughly so you get 2000 then you take um, away minus 1293 so roughly 800 and so the model predicts that a 20 year old will play around about 800 minutes of football and to compare that fit overall we do that in this code and here we're yeah again the, we've put in the equation for the straight line here is the straight line that the data is fitted here are the original data points and these red lines show the distance from the data to the minutes played and here was our 20 year old i said that it would be about 800 minutes and yeah it wasn't it wasn't my calculation it's a rough calculation but it wasn't so far off that's the prediction is that an eight uh, 20 year old will play 800 minutes this particular 20 year old played 400 minutes I want to go into a little bit more detail here about what we're actually doing when we're fitting the line. So I've said that this line has kind of magically appeared using the uh, statistical uh, fitting toolbox. But what the, the process that's going on here is that they're finding the line which has the smallest average squared distance to the points. And so you could imagine lots of different lines going through this data. You could imagine a line that went like that. Now, if you took those the, the, each of these points and drew the red line up to my to my new line, this one that might go through here, you'd find that the square of all of these distances is, is larger for that one. So the process is basically to minimize the square of all of these distances. And that's what uh, linear regression does. And I mentioned earlier R squared. 
So R squared is a measure of goodness of fit. And basically what that is, is if you just took a straight line through here, a, a horizontal line through the data, which would just say that every player was equally likely to play the same amount of minutes and there would be no correlation between age and minutes played. That would be a straight line there. And you calculated the sum of squares for that. So you just you, you calculate the sum of squares of the, these red lines for that straight line here. And you divide the sum of squares for this by that sum of squares. Then that gives you, I think it's one minus that, gives you the R squared. And that tells you how well your model has managed to predict predict the data. If you if your line really is just a um a straight, if there is no correlation in the data, then this R squared will be zero because you'll have one minus the sum of squares I've just talked about divided by the sum of squares. Now, these are things that you need to go back to your statistics lessons and go through, but the, the key things to search on here are the R squared values. And I also mentioned earlier the P values. The P value basically measures, do we, can we, can we reject the null hypothesis that there's just a straight line through the, through the data? So that's a bit more in, in, in the detail of how the actual fitting's going on. And I think it's important to know those things and they kind of get a little bit forgotten in the whole sort of machine learning approach to them, where we just see this as a kind of black box for generating lines. There's a very specific way in which we're measuring the distance between these particular data points in the line. And when we move on to expected goals in the next session, we'll see that we have to use a different way of doing that particular type of fitting. So each model has its, has its own way based on what's called maximum likelihood to do the fitting of the model. And we see that it increases as um, age goes on. Now, obviously, there's a problem here. It's, this is predicting that a 40-year-old will play 3,000 minutes. A 50-year-old will be somewhere up at, um, I don't know, three and a half, four thousand minutes, something like that. So obviously, this model has its limitations, but it might work quite well for our first question, which was about youth players and how many time, how much time we'll be expecting them to play. Again, we've just used a small amount of the data here, so we shouldn't, well, we shouldn't draw any big conclusions to this. We'll come back to using larger amounts of the data later. But going back to this problem, it's clearly, there's clearly a, an extrapolation problem, we call this, that, um, yeah, I'm nearly 50 now, I'm 49. And so I, I would apparently, if I was playing in La Liga, I would be playing 4,000 minutes. Clearly, apart from Zlatan, maybe, this model isn't really going to work. And even Zlatan, as he goes to 40, his, his minutes played is, is going down. So, OK, so what we do is we include a squared term. I'll show that here. That's the, that's the linear equation. And now we're going to have a squared term, which gives a quadratic equation. We're going to fit the quadratic equation. And we're going to estimate the parameters once again from the data. And that's done with this code, which I'll now run. Again, we've got the um, the fitting, the ordinary least squares regression fitting here, and we've got the parameters measured here. Now, of course, when we start to have squared terms, oh, sorry, the parameters are estimated here. Now, when we start to have squared terms, some of these get to be a little bit crazy large values. So it's very difficult to work out in your head quickly what prediction the model will be making. But if we plot these, we find the following relationship. Now, here again, as play when players are young, then as they get older, the minutes played increases. And we see a kind of maximum around here, around 30, 31, 32 for the minutes played by the player. I think this might be overestimating. I don't, I don't want us to read too much into, um, into real data about this. But what the model captures and what's important for you when you're using this type of model is it captures the overall curve in this type of in this type of data. What I'm going to do now is skip. And I already did this in the in the introductory lecture to this whole session session. I looked at a fitting of all the data points and you can do that if you want to fit all the data points. That's the task down be it down there. Really, I mean, either you can put the knobs, well, let's just put the number of observations up a bit and do the whole thing again. So now we've got loads of data. Um, we fit in the model. 
and you can see that this gets very messy comparing all these sum of squares that's why i do this but if we come down to the sum of and i'll just just comment out that and now we see a final fitting of the model through all the data and so we see a sort of maximum playing time around about the age 29 30 31 is the time that we'd expect players to be putting in the most minutes and and from then on it goes down pretty rapidly it levels off and starts to go down pretty rapidly um and i think even even this result yeah i mean i've said that you know we shouldn't read too much into it but is already a starting point for thinking about these things. If your club is about to sign a 28 year old, a 29 year old, five year contract, there should be some warning bells um, ringing there because the playing time, they might be playing at their peak now, playing very well, but that's going to go down quite rapidly. You're not going to get all of those um, minutes out of them. Some players you will, some players you won't, but it's on average, these things start to start to go down. So definitely something to think about. So have a have a go. I've, I've said, um, try these yourself. Try adding a cubic term. I think I've cheated and told you the solution to that already. Um, but think a little bit also, and I've said a bit about that. What are the limitations of this model? What can we really learn from, from a model like this? That, I think, is all I wanted to say.